Hello, welcome back to Let's Build the Ultimate Theme Park and Planet Coaster. Currently, we have a full view of the Toucan Kingdom, and I want to start the episode by marking everything we've built so far. So using green dots, I'm going to mark all the coasters, which we have 23 roller coasters in this park. With the light blue dots, I'm going to mark all the flat rides in our park, which we have 24 flat rides. I'm going to use pink dots to mark all the track rides, like the log flume, the go-karts, the car rides, and the transportation rides. Orange dots signify all of the restaurants or gift shops in the park, which we have 32 of those. A lot of merchandise and food to be bought. And I'm going to use dark blue dots to mark the restrooms, which I realized I think I might need to add a few more restrooms to the park. But once I added all these dots and marked everything that we've built so far, I was pretty blown away. I can't believe how much has been fit into this gigantic mega park. And today, we are going to be building the last ride in the park before I release version 1.0 of the park as a full park tour video and a downloadable park on Steam. But don't worry, I'm still going to be adding more rides after the full park is done as some bonus episodes because this park still has some room for growth, believe it or not. So the last ride that I want to put in is a ride that I've been wanting to add for a while and it's a boat tour ride, similar to the Jungle Cruise at Disneyland. Now the reason I wanted to put this ride in the park is because you can build it directly in the water. And I think this is the only ride that you can build directly in the water, which is pretty neat. I'm glad this exists. It's not like a log flume or river rapids where it has to stay inside some sort of track filled with water. But this lake back here is pretty large and there was quite a bit of empty space. So adding a boat tour felt like the best possible option for filling the space. And also, real fast, I want to let you guys know that if my voice sounds different or kind of unenthusiastic this episode, it's because five or six days ago, I went to the dentist and had a deep cleaning done, and they cut my gums up a lot in the process, and my mouth is still healing, and it's in a ton of pain, which is really unfortunate because I'm trying to get back into commentating right now, and I'm dealing with mouth troubles, but I'm pushing through. Fortunately, these Planet Coaster videos are pretty chill, and I can approach them more like I am the painter Bob Ross and just have a much more quiet and somber tone to my voice. So the way we're connecting this ride up to the rest of the park is up in the vintage area. I'm taking one of these buildings that we had just for decoration and I hollowed it out and I'm gonna make a secret path that leads through a cave underground all the way down to where the boat ride is. And I'm really happy the placement of this worked because I felt like the vintage area had the least amount of rides so adding one more water ride to the vintage section of the park felt like a really good idea. So to get to the boat ride, you have to go through a secret tunnel. And it leads you down to this little bank down here, this little beach, where we're going to have a ride queue for our boat ride. And now it's time to start building the station, which I'm going to continue the same architecture style as most of the buildings up in the vintage section and use these Bulvarian walls that have all these wooden beams and lattices that add an extra level of detail to this architecture type. I do love this wall type. The only downside is there's no smaller versions of the wall, like half sizes, fourth size, or triangular pieces so you can fill in different shapes. You have to combine it with other types of pieces in order to like fully flesh out this type of architecture style. But yeah, so I think last episode I said this would be the final episode of the series, but I think I'm actually going to have to do one or two more episodes to like fully finish this park because I have like a lot of small little details. I want the last video before the final park tour to be a video where I go through every single ride and just double check it and make sure I didn't miss any small details, which definitely will take like a full episode, maybe two, because I've put years of work into this park. I'm not going to just like push it out. It's going to be very thoroughly done. And like the problem is I always work on this park in spaced out increments because there's always so much other stuff I got to do in life because, you know, responsibilities. And so every time I come back to the park, I'm like kind of trying to remember like what I need to finish. So I'm just going to try to really push through and finish this park within the next few weeks and get it out there so I can continue working on some new stuff because I've been traveling the past several weeks. And one of the things I've done while traveling is I've gone to a couple zoos. I went to the one in El Paso, Texas and the one in San Francisco, California and I got a lot of inspiration for zoos, so hopefully, once this park is done, we can finally start making the ultimate zoo. Which I know I've been teasing for a very long time, but you know, building the ultimate zoo isn't easy. I needed some inspiration. Now I'm starting to finally feel inspired now that I've visited some zoos. And I wanted to visit zoos earlier, but everything closed down, so I didn't really have any options there. But we're getting there. 
We had to spend the past minute adding some beaches and some bushes and rocks just to naturalize the coast and make the, the view while riding this ride a little bit nicer. Now it's time to finish the station, which is kind of coming together. It's looking very spacious, which, which I would expect from a ride where full-size boats are gliding on through. Overall, I just wanted the area down here to feel really nice and cozy because it's part of the vintage section, and vintage is supposed to feel old and cozy and give you that nostalgic feel. Isn't it kind of wild to think that nostalgia is considered to be one of the biggest drugs? Like, people love familiarity. They love things that they recognize, which is why we like games like Super Smash Bros, because it's full of tons of nostalgic characters that have, like, a lot of meaning to us. And seeing them all in one place, it's, like, way cooler than just a bunch of random characters that were made up that we don't recognize. If you think about it from a different angle, are companies like Disney, Nintendo, and Nickelodeon that have invented tons of IPs that millions of people know across the world, are they like the modern drug salesmen because they're just like giving us tons of stuff that is full of nostalgia that makes us reminiscent and feel good? Also, during my trip, I went just about eight weeks without playing video games, which was a very nice detox. Playing Planet Coaster was my first time gaming for more than like 10 minutes in over eight weeks. And you know, I'm like really excited to get back into gaming because I feel like once you take a detox from things, they become way more enjoyable once you get back into them. That kind of goes for almost everything, right? Because once you like build up your tolerance towards something like your favorite food or doing your favorite activity, it gets old after a while. So it's always nice to take a break and come back with refreshed energy and excitement. And I'm definitely gonna put in that energy to finishing up this park the best that we possibly can. I don't know why I sing that, but I'm just kind of in a good mood. Even though my mouth hurts really, really bad, I'm really hoping I can go to the dentist later today to have my mouth checked out again because it does not feel like it should be this sore. Anyways, let's go ahead and decorate this cave. Starting with the wall to just kind of cap the outside and make it all fleshed out. Make it feel like there's some support holding everything up so this cave doesn't collapse on people. And it's kind of gonna be a challenge to blend all of this together and make it look good and natural, but I definitely get it done. Don't doubt the toucan. He can turn anything into a vibe. And he can also speak in the third person until the day he dies, apparently. <laughs> but yeah, we're just gonna caveify this little area. I thought it would be a really cool transition to walk into a really just fancy vintage style looking home and then all of a sudden there's a path that goes underground and you're like, wait, where does this go to? And then you follow this kind of slanted path, which I didn't use stairs because I'm trying to keep everything in this park uh, wheelchair accessible. So almost, I think, I think I've literally made every single area have a ramp to it and no stairs. I've been keeping consistent on that. So yeah, you follow this path down through this cave and then you end up on this little beach where there's a boat ride. And I felt like the vintage area needed this because I think the vintage area had the least amount of rides out of any section in the park. So adding one more tracked boat ride felt very appropriate. And also just kind of the scenery and stuff around the wooden coaster, I never truly like fleshed out any of the details and made like the beaches and everything look really nice. So I'm really happy that I kind of went through and just kind of polished this section of the park. But yeah, we're doing some nice lighting. Gotta make sure everything's lit up. That's like one of the other things I gotta do before we release this park, is I gotta make sure I have good lighting on every section of the park, which I think I've hit like almost everything, but there's probably still little things that I need to hit. So it's gonna take a very thorough swipe, which we have like over 50 rides in this park that need attention to detail. And then there's over 30, like there's like 40 restaurants and bathrooms. It's, it's intense. But here's a little look through the little cave that leads down to the boat ride. And we built this pretty quick, but I think it's all looking very nice and quaint and cozy. And it's a nice little addition to the vintage area that kind of like rounds it off a little bit. Now I'm just gonna add some more lighting to this wooden coaster because I realized there was like nothing on it. It was just a big silhouette. So I'm taking these gigantic spotlights and I'm gonna place them at the bottom of the track so the coaster can really stand out from across the lake from a distance. You know, just being in pure darkness didn't look that cool. And the lighting in this game just looks so good. The fact that it hits like every single beam of the support in like a more realistic way just blows my mind. I love the lighting engine of this game. And this game came out like six years ago now. Imagine if a second Planet Coaster came out now with upgraded engine and just 
everything they've learned from creating Planet Zoo, because Planet Zoo is way more optimized than this game. Frontier's potential for making simulation games in the future is just off the freaking charts. There's unlimited possibilities with what they can do in the future. So I'm obviously really bad at naming rides, so I named this Boat Ventures. If you have any better names, feel free to leave them in the comments because I know that's not the best one for sure. So the second half of this episode is going to be dedicated to working on the monorail system and our underground subway system that I'm going to get rather creative with. So in the city section of the park, we have a subway entrance and when you go down there, we have one of the stations for the monorail. And I am going to go with the subway theme, but I keep saying subway and I'm thinking of the sandwich shop. How did the sandwich shop have the right to try to take the name away from the public transportation? I don't get it. Anyways, this is going to be themed like a subway, but it's going to be a party slash club subway. So I'm going to be doing tons of cool stuff with lights, neon lights, and just... I'm going to make it fun because it's underground. Let's, let's have fun with it. It's in the very back of the park. Make the monorail a little bit more interesting, honestly. But first I had to go through and expand the tunnel and build walls and a roof and flooring and all of that just so everything would look clean because I didn't want it to look like a cave down here. And as far as subways are concerned, the only subway I've ever ridden is the one in Boston, Massachusetts when I went to a convention called PAX East. Boston had phenomenal public transportation, and I wish more cities were that well endowed when it came to their public transit. Now, currently, I live in Los Angeles, which is one of the biggest cities in the country, but also has some of the worst public transit infrastructure out of any city in the world, which is pretty mind-blowing to me. They have been doing lots of construction around the airport because they're putting in like a monorail system that goes from the airport into the city, I think, which is really, really good. And I think the reason they're doing that is because they just built a huge stadium in Los Angeles called the SoFi Stadium. I believe it's the most expensive stadium ever built. It's big. I haven't been there yet, but hopefully I'll get to visit it soon. And I think they're going to be hosting a future Olympic Games there. And so they're trying to put some extra public transit in before those games happen. So there won't be too much traffic or havoc whenever people are starting to travel in for those games because that brings a lot of tourism to the city temporarily. So the first section of the subway after the station, I started putting neon signs everywhere because I love the neon signs in this game. They're really pretty and kind of just reminds me of like one of those 50 diners or bars where there's just lots of neon everywhere. I just wanted that to be the vibe for a moment and in a moment I'll even be putting more signs on the ceiling. So it's just like a little neon tunnel for a while, but it looks cool and you really only see it if you ride the monorail for like five seconds. It's so unimportant, but you know, I'm putting all those tiny little details and like love into this park because it's going to pay off. I just know it. Then we have some neon bars just to go through a little neon rainbow. And then I'm going to use some neon honeycomb pieces to give kind of a cool disco floor look on the wall. It looks somewhat futuristic. This is one of my favorite custom scenery pieces I think I've downloaded from the Theme Makers Toolkit. Oh, I haven't checked the Theme Makers Toolkit in like a few months. I need to see if anybody's added any more cool scenery pieces there. I always love checking the Theme Makers Toolkit and seeing like what new stuff has been uploaded because people are always uploading new models and animatronics for you to download and put into your park. And if it wasn't for the Theme Makers Toolkit, I probably wouldn't have added on to this park as much as I did. But all those extra scenery pieces definitely kept me inspired. And also I want to apologize if my voice is getting quieter as the episode goes on. My mouth is getting more in pain, and I have scheduled a dentist appointment for the next day, but I'm still having to wait and record until then. I really want to get this episode out though, so I'm pushing through because I need to finish this park. That's my number one goal right now actually, is to get this park done so I can get it out there, because I've been sitting on it for way too long, and it's just, I want to finish something, you know? I need to feel that sense of accomplishment. So I just went crazy with the neon, looking good. Now we're going to build a little restaurant down here in the subway because I felt like it needed just a bit more space to lounge out in case you're waiting for the monorail. I'm putting some ice cream vendors down here because, of course, we want to get sticky ice cream all over the monorail seats, everyone's favorite, and we're going to have some benches down here. And I wasn't originally going to put this down here, but once I started adding so much decoration to the subway, I was like, okay, we got to have some food, <laughs> got to zest this place up a little bit more. 
I am really having fun with like the lighting and the colors down here though. I'm really just not caring. I'm making it bright and colorful and unrealistic just because it's a theme park. We're taking some creative liberties. We don't want it to be just like real life. That's no fun. If you want real life, you can go see real life. If you go to a theme park, you want to see stuff spicened up a bit. And also, speaking of like crazy lights and colors, the day of recording this tonight, I'm going to be going to my first official rave for like an EDM electronic dance music concert with tons of crazy lights everywhere. I am so excited. I've always wanted to go to a rave. I love EDM music. I've even like made EDM songs in the past. Like uh, it's been it's a big passion of mine. And today I'm finally going to get to experience the culture of it and see what it's all about in person. And who knows, maybe this will become a new characteristic trait of mine is going to raves. I can definitely see that because I love dancing. I'm a big dancer. I like clubbing and going to clubs and dancing to just pretty much any type of music. But EDM concerts are their own special amount of fun. Imagine like mosh pits for rock concerts, but with electronic dance music. There you go. But yeah, hopefully it's fun. I hope I have a good time, maybe make some new friends and get some inspiration because I plan on releasing a lot of my own music this year. And as an artist, I want to be as inspired and cultured as possible. I want to be infused with as many different genres and styles of enjoying music as possible within my like mental space so it can really just help with the songwriting process and I feel like I'm about to go hard so it's, it's gonna be a fun time but yeah I'm decorating the outside of the subway now which is interesting how inside of it is like a club but on the outside it's more like a castle great amounts of irony indeed and like upon thinking about it I'm realizing that I'll probably need like two to three more episodes after this to finish the park but this month, I am dedicating myself to finishing this Planet Coaster series because I'm going to be getting like dental work even more in the next couple weeks. So my mouth is going to be pretty much in pain. So working on Planet Coaster stuff is going to be the best option because I can work on like all the final tour videos and stuff where I don't even need to talk. So it's like a good timing for me to just wrap all this up. And I feel like with the end of this park, I want to build up a little bit of hype and just kind of do it all at once instead of like stretching it out for a few more months. So this next month of April is just going to be dedicated to Planet Coaster and we're going to get this park done. And I'm so excited about it. And I'm also going to be uploading a lot of Planet Coaster videos, like one video for each major coaster in the park, along with different tour videos and some other random things. So I just want to keep it like all uploaded and clustered at the same exact time so it all makes sense. And then I'm going to get back into doing a lot more probably randomizers this year because randomizers are fun and they make me a lot more money, which is important for my livelihood because damn, these gas prices out in California are crazy. The past like six times I filled up my gas tank have all been around $85 to $90. The gas has been around $6.50 to $7 a gallon. It's crazy. Like, what time do we live in? <laughs> it was like the worst time for me to go on a road trip because I started my road trip and gas prices were pretty much normal. And then a week and a half into it, the conflict happened and all the gas prices went up and I had to finish my road trip with high gas prices. And it's just, that's how the cookie crumbles. So the last thing we're going to work on today is I'm just going to do some extra cleaning up on the city. Just kind of work on some of these backdrops and cap off the end because kind of like the ends of these streets were all pretty messy and I want them to look nicer. And as far as the comment question of the day goes, I just want to know, how are you doing? How's life going? Give me a bit of a life update. Go ahead and just like talk about yourself in the comments for a little bit. And I'll be reading the comments and responding to some of them. And you know, it's nice to get like kind of connected to the viewers. So yeah, if you just want a place to just talk about your life a little bit and be heard, go ahead. This is the place. This is the 75th episode of a time-lapse series building a theme park. So if that's not a random comment section, then I don't know what is. And also I want to give a shout out to a viewer I actually met in person. Her name was Erin, and it was a really a sweet opportunity to meet her. It was great meeting you, Erin, if you're watching this episode. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you, and I hope you're doing well. And she told me that because of some disabilities she has, she doesn't even have the physical ability to build stuff like this in Planet Coaster. And so... The fact that she can just watch somebody online do it and still have things be brought to life despite her own physical limitations just brings a lot of happiness into her life that she wouldn't be able to have otherwise. And 
It's just moments like that where you gotta be thankful for the internet and YouTube and just these abilities to share our hobbies and our interests and all connect with each other. So Aaron, you're awesome, and thank you so much for all of the kind words you gave me when I met you. Anyways, we are reaching the end of another episode. We are getting so, so, so close to the final, final park tour video. Thank you guys so much for your patience. I'm going to be pushing hard through the next few weeks to get this theme park finished for you guys. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy the video, please press that thumbs up button. And to finish the video, let's go ahead and ride through our little subway tunnel. <laughs>